So let's get started now putting a joystick on our robot. We've got all our controls in place. We know we've got some raw structure set up. Uh, it's time to uh, actually add the joystick. Uh, the first thing I want to do is actually try out a keyboard operated joystick rather than the joystick itself. Uh, so in order to do this, we're going to use this ROS construct that's called the Teleop Twist Keyboard. Let me show you uh, how this works and uh, a couple of uh, different features here. So first I'm going to run it. Run Teleop Twist Keyboard uh, and Teleop Twist Keyboard. Uh, so now this is running in the background and if you see this is a keyboard based uh, thing and you might wonder what's it connected to. Uh, right now it's not connected to anything, but it is publishing messages on a standard topic. Uh, let's take a look and see what those messages look like. So I'm opening up another terminal on my desktop, which means I have to source If I want to use ROS, I'm going to source that again. Uh, and then I am going to run uh, a utility RQ. Uh, this is a general toolbox utility that's used for debugging. Uh, here you'll see these are a few things that are left over from the last time that I ran this. Uh, but it tends to be really a uh, handy way to take a look at what's going on on your robot system. So again, my laptop is on the same network as my robot. Uh, it's also on the same network as this, uh, uh, this program that's running, this Teleop Twist keyboard. Uh, let's take a look, first of all, at this really handy uh, visualization, uh, which is uh, all of my, um, where is that? My node graph. So this actually shows the graph of uh, the ROS graph of what's currently running. Uh, and if you see this, we have this Teleop Twist keyboard node here, uh, this, this topic that's being published, uh, and it's publishing out on the command velocity topic. So this is the node, uh, and it's publishing out on this command velocity topic. This is the one that we want to hook because we want to use this keyboard thing to drive our robot around. But how can we find out more about that that topic? Uh, that's where uh, my plugins get kind of handy here. Um, I can actually take a look at my topic monitor and here you see again this is the topic that was down here in the graph. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so this is the command velocity topic, uh, and this shows me a little bit about the structure of the message uh, for this velocity topic. Now I'm going to click this checkbox, and this actually subscribes to it. Again, think the pub sub messaging structure. Um, so now it's subscribing to that message structure. Uh, and here, if I go back to this keyboard window, um, you can see I have uh, keyboard commands. I'm going to type in a command here. Uh, I'll just press the I key. Uh, and you see when I press I and then I press K, um, the values actually change on the robot. So the robot starts or on that topic. So it starts publishing messages on that topic. Um, right now it's publishing about one per second. Uh, and, uh, and that's what uh, is happening through this program that's running on the keyboard. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to hook this command velocity topic in my robot. This is a pretty interesting and pretty handy uh, uh, message type uh, and this this command velocity type uses messages of type twist. Now before we just simply saw a string message, it was just one message, uh, but now I'm looking at a, a more complicated uh, structure. In this case, this structure has three 
has two different attributes. It has a linear attribute and an angular attribute. Each of these are vectors. Uh, and the vectors have x, y, and z positions for the linear. Uh, and the units for those are uh, meters per second. Uh, and then the angular uh, vector is in radians per second. So let's take a look at what this actually means. So when we think about the angular, uh, the, first of all, the linear vector. So x, so this is my robot. All right, so X means the robot moves forward. So if this message gets a command uh, that has a positive X value, that's a command saying, I want the velocity to move forward. Or if the robot were sending a message, it would send a message that it was moving forward by putting a positive X value. Does it make sense that the robot would send a Z value? Well, if it were sending a Z value, it'd have to be moving um, well, if it were sending a Y value, it would have to be moving left to right, and a Z value, it would have to be moving up and down. This robot doesn't move up and down. This robot does not move left to right. There are robots that do both of those, but not this one. So this is a general message infrastructure, message structure that I can use for a bunch of different types. In our case, we're only going to care about the x-axis that causes the robot to move forward. Uh, but all that does is move it forward. What about turning left and right? Well, that's also contained within this message. That is the, uh, the angular part of the message. All right? So if I consider the angular vector, uh, my angular vector says rotation about that axis. So can I rotate about my x-axis? That would be rotating like this doesn't really make sense for this robot. It doesn't work that way. What about the y-axis? That would be kind of popping a wheelie. Uh, if my robot were able to do that, that would be really cool, but it can't. So I, I can ignore uh, anything that comes in that's an angular thing on the y-axis. But if it's on the z-axis, look at that. So we rotate about the z-axis. So we can respond to this. So even though we have a complex message type uh, that's being sent to us by this command velocity uh, uh, message, all we really care about um, is the Z rotation and the X linear. So the Z rotation, which is part of the angular vector, and the X forward motion, which is part of the linear vector. Those are the things that we want to respond to. That's what you're going to see in our code in just a second. So this one is uh, 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 an, an improved version, slightly improved version of the wheelie node that we've already been working with. Uh, if you'll see, there's just uh, more comments in here. Otherwise, it's very similar to uh, what we've seen before. Uh, the initializer for the uh, wheelie class um, has some extra functions here, some wheel diameters, some RPMs, and so on. We probably won't get into those today, but you can see how they'll uh, could be important to figure out uh, some physical motions and things like that. Is the frequency we're familiar with, um, set some maximum RPMs and so on, and speeds. Um, and now, um, if you recall, we had the subscription for the command callback. We're going to create a new subscription for the command velocity. All right, so CMD underscore VEL. That's what we know that our uh, Teleop keyboard publishes on. There are other utilities that publish on the same topic, and we want to use them all. So we're going to listen for twist messages that come in on this topic. And when they come in, we're going to call the velocity callback function. Okay, so if I go over here, uh, just scroll down again, a lot of these utility functions, same functions, just been slightly rewritten, maybe slightly different syntax. But let's take a look at this command callback here. Uh, this is the one that we saw before. Uh, so that's uh, looks looks just the same as before. We're going to skip over the joystick callback for right now and go right to the uh, command velocity callback. So this is pretty straightforward. As I mentioned, all we want is uh, to pull the linear x component 
and the angular z component. If we receive other values in on other axes, we just ignore those. If somebody thinks our robot can move uh, up on the z-axis or can twist about the y-axis, we're just going to ignore that. Obviously, you could message that or trap those errors, uh, but for our simple robot, we're not going to mess with that. So then uh, we use this uh, general utility that sets the motor speeds. There's uh, some math in here that has to do with uh, radians and converting radians into RPMs and radians per second into RPMs per second and so on and so on. Um, um, so I'm not going to dig into those, uh, but essentially uh, this is structured uh, to first figure out how much we have to move each wheel based on how much we're twisting. Uh, so that first thing that I did was capture this desired angular momentum as self.spin. Uh, so I used that to figure out what is uh, the desired twist amount that I'm going to have for each wheel. Uh, and then I add in the forward motion. Uh, I captured that up here uh, for self.speed. So this section figures out the speed. Uh, now I have to do a little bit of unit conversion here. So my twists are in radians per second. I have to convert that to uh, RPMs for, for each tire. Uh, same thing moving forward. Um, I, have at, I, I took in meters per second. I actually have to convert that to RPM and to duty cycles and so on. So that's where there's a little bit of... Um, a little bit of math thrown in here uh, and you see things like converting uh, per seconds to per minutes and so on um, and then also uh, there's a little bit of calibration in case one of your motors turns faster than the other um, I have what the maximum RPM is so I get a little bit of uh, calibration there uh, clip myself to make sure I'm not going above or below 100 um, percent and then we'll see how this governor works in a, in a few minutes here. All right. And then after that's done, I go back to that same uh, 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 utility I had before, which is run the wheel at a certain percentage. All right. So uh, that, that runs the right wheel and the left wheel at the certain RPM, the certain percentage, uh, and I'm good to go. All right. So again, what you see here is a velocity callback that sets... Uh, this object's spin and speed uh, and then calls this uh, utility to define the motor speeds uh, and then I do some math here uh, to fi figure out what the duty cycle needs to be for each of these. Obviously you can collapse a lot of this down if you just want to simply uh, go based on per excuse me percentages and so on. Uh, my main startup looks exactly the same as before. Uh, I just spin uh, on my wheelie and then shut down. All right, here's my creating the wheelie class. A few extra arguments to tell how fast the left and right wheels go. If you see, my motors are slightly different, so I just added those as arguments into that class. Uh, you can dig into that class a little bit more, but again, the fundamentals are what we've already covered here. All right, so I am going to go ahead and start this up, uh, and then we'll take a look uh, at how it behaves. So you can see our robot spinning now. I'm going to go back over to our command velocity function that you see is spinning over here. Right. And now this one should be subscribing to that topic. This one should be publishing on the command velocity topic. And I'm going to go ahead and try and see if this actually works. So I'm going to press the I. There's the L. There's the R. And the K for stop. And there's the comma. To go backwards uh, and so you can see how now we're actually controlling the robot with uh, the keyboard. So I'm going to set that to go and then I'm going to change the speed right? so you can see how that lowers the speed And 
then we'll speed it back up again. So you can see this gives us a lot of nice options for how we can uh, create twist messages uh, through the command velocity uh, structure. We can see them in RQT. We can generate them with uh, Teleop Twist Keyboard. Uh, there's other utilities like this uh, plugin for RQT that allows us to steer the robot using the mouse. There's also a mouse command plugin that, that you can use. Um, and all these assume uh, that we're publishing message commands on the command velocity and our robot now listens on that and will accept those. Now let's go one step further and control it with the joystick. Joystick is a little bit different. At first it might seem like it should be the same, but as you can tell, there are a number of different uh, controls within the joystick. Some of them are buttons, some of them are analog, some of them are digital. So we have to map those all into our robot and figure out how to get the robot to respond. All right, so our first thing that we need to do is to actually create that joystick node that's gonna publish those joystick messages. So let's take a look at how we do that. Okay, so to control with the joystick, the first thing I've got to do is take my joystick. Uh, this is just a generic Xbox controller. Uh, you can use whatever joystick works for you. Uh, and then I'm going to plug this into my computer. Uh, so now that's connected via USB. Uh, I stop my um, I stop my wheelie class. I don't want that running right now. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, and then on my uh, laptop, since I plugged this into my laptop, I'm going to start up the ROS Joy node on my laptop. Okay, so now that is a built-in, again, another piece of built-in ROS code uh, to listen to my joystick and publish uh, all the information from the joystick on this join node. Um, so if I start RQT again, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at topics and topic monitor. Uh, and I'm going to look at this new joy node. So we'll switch over to take a look at what happens when I press buttons on the joystick controller. All right, so this is my controller. Okay. So, uh, and you could see the uh, you could see the array there uh, and the topics. They're changing. It's kind of hard to see in this format as I press the buttons. You can see I press the A button and there's a button that shows up in the array there. Um, so this changes, but I need something a little bit better to see what's actually going on. So I'm going to use another ROS utility uh, to watch it instead of RQT. All right, we know that this is connected, we know that it's listening, but now I want to see the topics in a little bit different way. So what I'm going to do is ROS2 topic echo. And that's my join node. So all this does is echo whatever it sees on the join node. Okay, I'm going to make this uh, full screen so you can see it. Uh, and you can see this is actually publishing topics pretty quickly, pretty rapidly. All right, so I'm going to work with this a bit. Uh, and let's see what happens, first of all, when I press the uh, A button. We saw that uh, before. I press the A button, there you see button 1. And there's the B button, and then the Y button and then the Z button. So you can map out from this message structure which buttons do what. All right, now I'm going to uh, 
push in uh, this bumper here. And you can see which axis that updates. And as you notice, the axis goes from minus one all the way up to positive one. So all the way out is positive one, all the way in is negative one. Uh, so we're looking at this, uh, this axis right here. Uh, so that is one, two, three, four, five. That's my fifth axis. Uh, so there's that many different axes on this type of controller. You know, press another, another one. And also this joystick up here, um, I can see it actually has two axes on it. Uh, and each axis goes from, from one to negative one. From one to negative one, uh, and if I look a little bit more at the message type, I could see this is this is the the format of the standard joystick message type. Uh, it has this header with a timestamp on it, uh, but the data actually comes in the axes array and the buttons array. So in this axis array, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different axes, uh, and then I have all these buttons down here. Again, all I have to do in order to respond to that is to map them to something. So let's go back to the uh, wheelie function. We had looked at this before. This is the same code we looked at before, uh, but now I have a joystick callback in here. Let's take a look at that one. <clears throat> we skipped over this last time. So self that joy subscription. So again, I'm listening on a standard message, uh, and this message is the joy message, and the message type is uh, capital joy. All right, and then I, uh, when I get a message in, I uh, go to the this callback routine, the underscore joy callback routine. All right, so if I look at the joy callback routine, that's down a little bit further, uh, and here it is right here. All right. Uh, in this case, we mapped out which buttons on my controller map to where. Um, and um, all the ones that I care about is I'm going to use the, these two axis buttons, which were this joystick controller, the left, right, and the up, down on that. Uh, and then I'm also going to use this button right here for an emergency stop. So that was button five. All right. Uh, so all I have to do is uh, monitor those uh, those inputs that come in on this message. All right, so in my joy callback, um, I take a look at the value of the axis, uh, and um, I have a little bit of a wiggle room here. I notice that my axes don't go all the way to zero, so I'm just throwing away from zero to 0 0.1. Um, and then if it's greater than 0.1, then I start moving. If it's that small, I can't, my robot can't move that slow anyhow. All right, so I capture that axis here, um, and then I capture the other axis. One axis, the left-right axis, is gonna just simply set my spin, uh, and then the other axis, the forward-backwards, is just gonna set my speed. Uh, and then I override all that. If my message button five is pressed, I'm just gonna set the speed to zero and the spin to zero. And then I call this function that I've already written, this set motor speeds function. Uh, so all I have to do is, again, set the speed and the spin based on what I get on my uh, joystick and I should be good to go. All right, so we're gonna give this one a shot now. Uh, and if this works, then we're gonna have our joystick ready to go. <clears throat> So we have our joystick node running here. Now on my robot, I just simply want to start it up again. And it's now spinning. Uh, and I'm going to try uh, to use my joystick and to control my robot.
So there you have it. So I have control over my robot with my joystick. And I also have my emergency stop button. If I want to override, I can always press the brake. All right, so we're good. We're almost done. Uh, the only thing left to do is to have our robot stop before it runs into things. Uh, so we're going to add a sensor to our robot next.